Are you wondering how to make sure your problem-solving steps don't start out on the wrong foot? In this video, I'll be talking about 5W1H as a means to help you add clarity to your problem-solving efforts, so you don't forget to ask some essential questions, so you don't act with incomplete information, and so you don't waste your limited problem-solving resources. Hi, it's Jeff Hajek here from Volaction Continuous Improvement, where we focus on helping you drive positive change in your organization and other changes that benefit both you and your company. If you are new here, make sure that you hit the subscribe button down below and like it, please. I also recommend making sure to click on the links that we provide in the video so you can get the most out of the information I am presenting. Okay, now let's dive into 5W1H. So a long time ago, Rudyard Kipling wrote a little poem about the six honest serving men. I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. Now, I'm surprised myself a little bit here by reciting poetry in one of my lean videos, but these six questions are now the basis of 5W1H. Because of its origins, this little tool is also known as the Kipling Method. The whole point of this tool is to provide some structure to your thought process when taking on projects or attacking problems. Actually, structure is probably not the right word. Context might be a little bit better. You should have a process, the structure, for your problem solving that incorporates these questions into the steps so you don't forget them. But that structure should take 5W1H into account. So if you follow your process, all these questions should be addressed. The point I want to stress here is that your process should not leave you without answers to these important questions. But to be clear, my recommendation is to create and use a process for your problem solving that makes sure you cover 5W1H. I'm not really advocating that you methodically walk through all the W's and the H if you're doing things formally and your process is sound. In that case, you should have all these questions answered as you move through the steps of that process. But if you are working on a minor informal project, that's a different story. In that case, use 5W1H to check your work. But certainly, Use a process for big problems, especially if they involve other people. Our countermeasures sheet and the A3 template are both examples of problem-solving methods that incorporate 5W1H into the process. I encourage you to visit Volaction.com and use the search feature to find all the information on problem-solving that we offer and to find out how to get those two forms. And remember, if you are watching the full version of this video on Volaction videos, we are currently offering these tools as part of the CI Central subscription, so make sure you download them. From the poem, you probably figured out that 5W1H stands for who, what, when, where, why, and how. If you understand these Ws, you have a pretty good understanding of the problem you are trying to solve. Now, like most tools of this nature, and by that I mean vague, conceptual ones, it is subject to a fair amount of interpretation. For example, what does when mean? Is it when the solution is needed, or is it when the problem started, or when it last occurred? Or is it all three? The truth is that as long as you ask the questions and think through the answers, you are way, way ahead of where you would be if you just jumped into solving the problem without considering the five W's and H. Let's look at an example. Consider how you might ask these questions if you noticed that your car started getting poor gas mileage. Who noticed the problem? Who drives the car? What changed? Are you using a new gas station that might have a different quality of gas? Are there maintenance issues on the car? Things like that. And with what? you might also consider the impact of the problem. What was the magnitude of the change? For when, you might ask when the gas mileage got worse, or you might ask when it was first noticed. And there are other related time-based questions that can come up. How often mileage changes, or what time of the day you drive, or really when questions, even though they start with some of the other words when phrased this way. Now there's a little teaching point here that I should dive into. Don't force things. How often or what time are really when questions, not what questions. Resist the urge to speak unnaturally just to make the question fit into the proper bucket. The point is to consider the issue and not check some magic box to get some sort of mysterious credit for perfectly following the Kipling method. For where, I'd ask where the car has been driving. Are you taking a new route that might have different road surfaces or more stop and go driving? Is it going through a different environment that might affect combustion, such as dirt roads? You might even break the car down into physical sections that might affect the problem. Tires, electronics, filters, or the engine are all different locations that might be related 
to where the root of the problem stems from. Now here is where the application of 5W1H gets a bit tricky. There are layers to the why question. You might ask why you changed gas stations, which is okay early on. But if you start attributing a cause, the why, to the whole problem rather than just to the symptoms, you tend to stop looking. If you realize the driver of the car you're looking at started to take a new route and attribute that to being the why answer to the problem of poor mileage, you'd probably not keep looking at other possibilities, such as maintenance issues. You'll gain experience at this over time, but even now, with years of focused problem-solving experience, I still try to delay answering the final why until really, really late in the data collection process. There is a caveat here, though. When problems have a low risk of failure or a low cost of trying solutions, I'll dive right into them in an attempt to solve them without any real extra effort. Adding a second garbage can to a location where a lot of trash is generated might be a solution to a problem, but it doesn't really need much thought. Sometimes just do it is the best approach. But back to the why in 5W1H. In general, you should ask why about the changes and symptoms to a problem early on and attribute the overall why to the actual problem late in the analysis part of your problem solving. And finally, the odd letter out, the H, how. How is the problem, the bad mileage, noticed? How did the condition that led to the change happen? Like with why, how can have more than one meaning? There's a how did it happen style of question and a how do you fix it style. Focus on the former. The latter question comes way later. For the mileage example, you might ask, how was the poor mileage noticed? Stay away from how to fix it. Now, I just wanted to give you a heads up that we generally don't post our videos on YouTube in their entirety. We have some additional content here that is only available on our full version at Vlaction Videos. A subscription there is a great bargain and you get a lot of bonus material you can download. Okay, time to wrap things up now. Early on, I mentioned a few things that this tool will help with. The biggest takeaway is that when you act with incomplete information, you tend to find yourself on the wrong path more often than you should. Now, many people have pretty good intuition about problems, which can actually be a problem in and of itself. People who are confident in their problem-solving ability, specifically in their ability to rely on intuition rather than use a process, probably get good results most of the time. The confidence they have comes from somewhere. Most people don't get confident about something until they've had some success at it. The problem is that they are as equally confident when they are right as when they are wrong. 5W1H helps them reduce the number of false positives, so they reduce wasted effort. Now, thanks for watching. As this video is part of our Continuous Improvement Companion, I want to remind you that we have an extensive online guide of lean terms, as well as an accompanying downloadable PDF. Follow the links on the screen or in the description below to find out how to get it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, best wishes on your continuous improvement journey.